We have multiple scenarios on energy transition of what could happen in the future. One of those scenarios looks at what the pathway is that we're on right now. It's very similar to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change scenario that looks ahead to the future, and it predicts that we're in a world where the temperature of the planet might increase about 2.5 degrees. If we want to move away from that and toward the Paris Agreement goals of well below 2 degrees centigrade and where there's pressure to move to 1.5 degrees, then it means that we need to change our energy systems. It means that we need to decarbonize the systems that we have today. So it means more carbon capture. It means accelerating the process of developing of hydrogen. It means using digital technologies in every way possible to achieve efficiencies in the, in the, in the energy systems of today. It also means helping to use natural gas in transitioning away from coal. But then we also have to build the energy systems of tomorrow. The ways that we expand um, renewable energy, the pledge out of COP28 to triple renewable energies, to increase the use of, of nuclear power. But it means, I, again, I come back to this issue of hydrogen, new fuels, new technologies that can radically reduce emissions. And the challenge, the thing that makes it so hard is that we have to do both at the same time, right? If you don't build the energy economy of the future, then you can never transition. You have to go from where we are today to something new. And that's one of the things that's so hard, that we have to do both of these things. Make sure that the energy economy of today works to decarbonize it, but then also look at how do we create a new foundation for an energy economy in the future.